This cooler topped the thermal charts in the recent 5 for Ryzen 5 sub $50 tower cooler roundup. With only four heat pipes and a really slim heat sink, it had no business being as close as it was to the reference grade Nox or U12A. So can we throw some U12A at it to make it um, almost a Chromax U12A? Hey, and welcome to Machines and More. Hope our friends in the US had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. And for everyone else, I guess I hope you had a wonderful Thursday. The ID Cooling SE 224XT impressed me a lot in recent testing, and that was with its stock fan, this, uh, this guy here. Um, that recent comparison left me with some questions. Uh, today, I'm going to take a look at how one might make this cooler even better than it is, and what might be making it so, so close to the u 12 at least with the 5600X. Um, a little bit of a spoiler. It is looking like a little bit of a one-trick pony. So ID Cooling's SE 224XT was within a couple of degrees of the U12A in the recent comparison, and that's pretty impressive for what is essentially a $30 cooler. One of my observations was the exquisite base plate machining on this cooler, and it well exceeded my expectations for how much it cost. It fit well in the NR200, and with a little mod by taking off the cover plate with the appropriate Torx, T8 driver, you can get it to fit with a tempered glass panel. It sports a mere four heat pipes and with a heat sink weight of about 530 or so odd grams. Uh, on specs alone, this heat sink doesn't stack up to the U12As, unless of course you've been waiting for the Chromax version of the U12A, in which case, this will get you closer than anything will until that arrives. Well, hopefully Q1 2021, it will actually arrive. I surmised in the last video that a combination of quality base plate machining and opportune heat pipe positioning relative to the single chiplet of the 5600X was what made it so good. The Noctua U12A is the best single tower heat sink currently with seven massive heat pipes and also very good base plate machining too. Now, my valuation of the Noctua is pretty simple, right? It's a $40 heat sink with you know, two $30 fans. And as many of you know, these Noctua NFA 12 by 25s are one of the best all around fans on the market with an amazing static pressure and airflow performance relative to its noise output. The ID cooling is really more like a $20 heatsink with a $2 fan. So in reality, though this unit may be a bit more on the value end of things, you could spend a bit more to replace the fans and hope to end up with some additional performance, and it wouldn't necessarily be unreasonable. So for this experiment, I put the same exact NFA 12 by 25s used on the U12A on the SE224 XT's heatsink. Of course, to get it a little bit closer to a Chromax U12A, I asked my son to help put some black Chromax bits on it. Quick tip. If you wanna keep a toddler busy, some Noctua fans and Chromax bits are a pretty good way, at least for about 10 minutes. Now, it actually looks pretty good, at least I think it does. And I would take this look over the original bare uh, aluminum heat sink of the U12A any day and the tannin brown fans. On the stock ID cooling paste, I put the cooler through the same blender render that was used for the Roundup video. And the fans were run at the exact same RPM as the U12As at 1500 RPM. And that just about does the trick. On the 5600X, this cooler with the main parts of the U12A matches the U12A. I'd consider this well within measurement error, although at no point did it actually ever top the U12A, but I think it's close enough to call it a draw. Uh, that is just incredible. Using Noctua's own NTH1 thermal paste on the cooler, I hope to see some additional gains, but then again, I ended up in this exact same spot, but that would have been the icing on the cake if it could actually top it. Still, in other words, somehow this heatsink is as good as the much larger and, you know, the heatsink that has much more heat pipes than the U12As. Um, that makes no sense, right? Surely heat pipes and heatsink mass count for something, right? So when I removed this cooler, to repaste with Noctua's paste in, in the changeover, I saw something I've never seen before when taking a cooler off. Now the smoothness of the paste on the base plate was a sight to behold. The Z in the Ryzen was imprinted very clearly on the remaining paste and it was the most even layer of perfection. At any rate, this warranted a bit more testing. Was this heatsink as good 
as the U12A all the time, or was it just some kind of synergistic effect with this particular AM4 die? Or maybe it was the more limited thermal output of the lower TDP 5600X. So what I did was I threw the two coolers in the into the only Intel system I had set up, and that's my personal build in the NKSM1, which is currently running the 10700K. I had been testing the U9X Chromax for the channel, so it was seeing a little downtime anyway, so I could afford to mess around with it a little bit. The heatsink has a slight compatibility issue with this case, right? I mean, I guess if I force the panel in place, it just might fit. <laughs> well, I was testing open anyway to eliminate any other variables, so it was totally fine. Uh, if the ID cooling tower was as good on an Intel die as the U12A, then we could probably conclude that this is somehow a fantastic heatsink in its own right. Now, this 10700K was clocked at 4.7 gigahertz on a voltage of 1.15, and I ran the same exact blender render. Look at the results. Oh no, we flew too close to the sun. Something happened here. It's like the ID cooling tower fell off a cliff. Instead of being neck and neck with the U12A, now it's really far behind. And what was once a very smooth interface of thermal paste didn't actually look so good on this chip. So, okay, not so good on the Intel die. I think many of us can live with that, provided if, you know, if it performs well enough on AM4. The 5600X is a single chiplet design, so how about we test this cooler with a dual chiplet design? I don't have a 5900X on hand yet, but I do have a 3900X, so I fired that up on the same B550i Aorus board. Locked at 4.2 gigahertz on 1.25 volts, the 3900X is probably the hardest of the Zen 2 lineup to cool, since it has one good chiplet, but one not so good chiplet. Still, it's a fantastic chip, and it should let us put this comparison to rest. And Looky look, it's nowhere as close as it was with the 5600X. Still though, I think this type of thermal performance is completely adequate for cooling the 3900X and I would think also the 5900X. So that leaves us with two theories that we can kind of leave this at. One is perhaps the interface between the IHS of the single chiplet Ryzen chips is just really, really good somehow. Or the second one, the 65 watt TDP of the 5600X is just at the saturation point for what these four heat pipes and heatsink are capable of conducting. So the higher thermal output of the 10700K or the 3900X needed the additional heat pipes and the heatsink mass of the U12A, all right? So I didn't have enough time to test the single chiplet 3700X, but I'm guessing that it would work really, really well and pretty close to the U12A too. But I think it's a, uh, a combination of those two factors. So long story short, would I recommend buying the $30 cooler just to slap $60 worth of fans at it? Well, for me, it's not a firm yes based on what I've seen so far. Now, if you want to run Ryzen 9 or Comet Lake, then, I mean, there's no point. You should just stick to the U12A. I mean, after all, this is $100. Right? It's a reliable, high-end product that despite donating its part to another cooler, still can't be caught. So this is the complete air cooling package. For that extra $10, you can reliably know that it will work well on anything you can reasonably throw at it. However, the ID cooling unit does one thing that the U12A can't. It can scale. So if you're running the 3600 or the 5600X now, and you think you might one day want to step up to 5800X or 5900X when Zen 3 prices drop, and they will, then one could pick up the cheaper cooler, <laughs> run this uh, the stock fan at a lower RPM just to avoid any noise issues because it's totally fine on 5600X at, uh, at a low to mid RPM and put the savings towards a better GPU, right? Then if you do eventually upgrade CPUs or you feel the need to get better performance, then you'll go ahead and you know pick up a better fan or two, perhaps the Chromax NFA 12 by 25s if they come out next year, or you can go with Tandem Brown right now. The performance on Ryzen 9 wasn't nearly as good as I had hoped, but at the same time, I do think it's perfectly competent. So for anyone looking for a Ryzen 5 cooler right now, this, and maybe a single fan upgrade could be enough to serve as an end game air cooling solution. Even though it might cost about the same as the U12S, from all the testing that I've seen, it is better. 
And for the same cost of $60, you are getting a better fan than the NFF12 that comes with the U12S. After all, you can't buy this U12A with just one fan, right? So I, for one, can't wait until Noctua releases the Chromax U12A. And trust me, when it comes out, you will see it here on the channel. <laughs> so I hope that was an enjoyable little experiment. And if you enjoy the content today, please subscribe to get the latest updates on new content. And I've also left some product links down below if you'd like to help support the work here. Big thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.